Hello. I'm here. You're here. We're all here. Here we are, right here. It's Thursday. Uh, I've had a uh, furious brainstorming session, which involved mostly just walking around the grocery store looking at things and buying nothing, because I decided I would make this, which I already had. Um, this is a delicata, which is a type of squash. It's related to all your other winter squashes, butternut, acorn, all those pumpkins. Um, with the distinction of you can eat the skin, which you can't eat the skin on all of them. You can't eat the skin on a butternut, for example. It's too tough. It never cooks down tender. Um, we did eat the skin on that, that sugar pumpkin I got before. That's another one of the few that you can eat the skin on. Uh, you can eat the skin on this guy. And I, in my brainstorming, was trying to come up, what, would I, what can I do? What interesting thing can I do? Well, it's a cold, rainy day in the fall. It's squash season. And then I spotted these guys. Now they're frozen, but we'll thaw them out. Um, cod loins for a very appealing price. Um, so we're making kind of like a fish pie. I was thinking, oh, what can I stuff this with? I didn't want to make this into a puree. I wanted to use it as, as a vegetable. I wanted to keep its structure. Um, so what we're stuffing it with is, so typically when you make like a stuffed pepper, it's a rice mixture. Um, cause you want some sort of grain to help soak up the various juices and to sort of give you a, a, a bulk. Now these guys already have a pretty good amount of, of, of stru starchy structure to them. But the logic still holds. You want something starchy and filling to fill it up. Um, so, as the million words in my title suggest, we're making a risotto, but I'm making a pasta risotto because, again, thing I already have that I've been meaning to use up. This big bucket, which was, you know, a lot fuller when I started. So we're getting, we're getting through it. This is this tiny little pasta grains. Uh, here, let me get over to the... Uh, countertop where we all have already have the cutting board ready there's our uh we're real dim over here today um there's our squash it's uh these little pasta grains so we're not making a rice risotto we're making a what is going to be functionally like a risotto but out of these little pastas <laughs> because again something i need to use up um the fish stock the shellfish stock has been sitting now for a little bit there's not a ton of it left but there's some of it left and i've got to use it up best way to use up a bunch of stock make a risotto let's actually give it a sniff today no it smells fine um stocks don't keep now shellfish stock is less prone to going off than the ones that have a lot of gelatin in them that are very very protein rich um but what good way to use a bunch of stock is to make a risotto so we're gonna make a risotto out of the pasta I want it to be creamy. I'm thinking along the lines of like a fish stew, but in a rice form and then stuffed in a... I mean, well, you... All those words I put in the title. We're going to mush all that together into one into one crazy thing. Um, I have no concept of how long this is going to all take. Step one. Preheat our oven. We're going to preheat our oven. I should have done immediately, but I'm going to do now. Uh, we're going to go for 425. Step two. This guy needs to be pre-roasted. I uh, You can do like a stuffed pepper. Stuff it and then cook the whole shebang. Um, I wouldn't trust that a squash could do that. Um, I'm going to put it back in with the stuffing in it, but it really, these things are solid enough that they kind of need, let's see, I want to cut it this way for some depth, or, or I want to cut it this way for some width. Um, Okay, 
I want to get a nice clean bisecting of it as well. It'll really be lousy if we break this up because I don't have another one of these. So we're going to attempt to really carefully cleave through it. Fortunately, Delicata is a bit of a softer gourd than some of its competitors. So I should be able to just drive straight through it. It's the little, the little bud at the bottom and the little stem at the top that are really giving us a resistance. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting there, we're getting there. Okay. And that's a decent shape. Decent condition. Um, one side's a little bit deeper than the other, but that's probably fine. And I th uh, we need to scoop out the, the guts with a thin-edged Sturdy, thin edged spoon. Oh, and we need a place to deposit our scraps as we generate them. Uh, and you want to be kind of gentle. Eating squashes aren't as sturdy as like a carving pumpkin. So if you're used to scooping out a carving pumpkin, you might be tempted to really dig in with the spoon but uh, you'll get a lot of the, uh, you'll end up scraping away a lot of the uh, edible flesh of the squash on an eating squash if you really dig in like you would with a pumpkin. So you wanna let, you wanna have a nice thin edged spoon so that you don't have to dig in. And then you wanna do kind of a pretty gentle scraping. It doesn't need to be perfectly clean. Um, these little fibers are edible they're just kind of a weird texture. And we're going to roast the heck out of this, so they're going to get all cooked off anyways. Uh, and that's the vessel for our eventual stuffing, this little uh, trough. This actually looks looking ideal at the moment. Um, squashes like this and a bunch of other varieties, um, are massively in season right now. They are coming in like crazy. They've been coming in crazy like crazy for weeks. Um, so, if you've never done anything with whole squashes other than... I suppose a lot of people have worked with butternut. Um, if you've never done anything experimental <clears throat> or interesting with whole... Squashes, now's the time. They're in season, so they're full of flavor. They're cheap. Um, they're local, oftentimes. Getting things in season is always better. There's a reason things have seasons. Um, it's not just that that's when they're available. It's, that's, it's that when they're in season is when they are at their best. Uh... Which often also means it's the time that they are available. Let's parchment our tray. Oil these guys up. They can't go in until the oven is hot. But I may as well get them all ready to go. Oop, too much oil there. Uh, 
they make them super easy to oil too because you just put the oil in the trough and then you get your fingers in there and you rub it all around on the cut surface and honestly you probably should oil the uh, outside as well it will help with the thermal interface that's that's the function of oil in cooking it is a thermal interface so that the heat is held against the food item as you are cooking it I've used a little bit too much oil but that's not the end of the world. Uh, try to roast these things just bare and they will cook eventually but it'll take longer and it'll happen much less evenly. Uh, the oil, that's what oil do. Um, and now I need to wash my very oily hands. Probably wipe off the, the board there too. Um, I feel like we're either going to have a short one or a long one today, rather than a middling one. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? You never know where the twists and turns are going to arise. Ow, that water is hot. Okay. Uh, so, those guys can sit over there on the stove, waiting for the oven to heat up we can prep some other things. Clean off my board, because I got some oils on it. What the heck was that? There's a noise in the room. Must have been the upstairs neighbor. Um, so I, I guess I've, I guess our stuffing, our filling, is all going to have to be built in a pot. And it's going to be a little bit of a sticky situation. So we're going to get out my nonstick saucepan, which I end up using a lot more than I expect. If you asked me whether I would get a lot of use out of a nonstick saucepan, I would probably would have said no. But in practice, I use it a lot. Probably because it's a convenient size. But also, I, I find myself cooking a lot of sticky things. Um, uh, return of the frozen hunk of bacon. Wipe the uh, squash juices off of my, ow, I bumped my mic and I poked myself with it. Um, wipe the squash juice off of my knife so we can get into this bacon. I want the fattier part of the bacon today. This bacon chunk is really uneven. I think we're gonna try to get this end off over here. like this guy needs to be trimmed down. There were some weird discolorations on it. 
Um, but I'm always, I'm always looking out for now. It's been frozen, so it should be fine, but this big chunk of fat on the side here is what we really want. But then I wanted at least a little bit of the bacony flavors as well. I think I'm going to trim just a thin sheet off this end. Yeah. It's a bacon end as well, so it's got a little bit of like gnarly bits. Uh, so we'll just tiny shaving off the side. I heard my oven click. Yep. So I'm not going to wait around and we're going to put the squash in. We're going to set a timer so we don't forget about it for 30 minutes. 30 minutes from now with a nice round number. 5.20 on my clock. Okay. I want these bits to be pretty small when we get down to it, so... carefully dice up each slice so that we have as small of bits as we can manage. Oh, someone must have been a, a resub or something. I have an additional sub. Thank you, additional subscriber. I didn't get a notification about it. But my number went up. That's fun. Okay. And then there's the just fat cap end here, which is what I'm really after. I'm hoping I don't have to use any additional oil. That the, uh, the bacon fat here will be enough Tempted to throw in a little bit of extra starch just to ensure that we get a thick result. I don't know that there's going to be enough coming off of the mini noodles for that. Uh, but I guess we'll find out. Okay. Boy, I've had a lot of bacon this week. Um, wow, and my camera's really stripey over here. What the? Uh, that. Let's, um, reset that camera. Okay. Okay, well, I guess it's just one of those days. Um, so, starting with bacon, well, start, technically starting with squash, but starting with bacon as the, uh, for the filling part, this will give us some flavor to work with. Should give us quite a bit of fat in the pan. I'm hoping that there will be no additional fat needed. And it... Uh, 
And that's it. Um, if I'm going to be making this into a like pasta porridge, that's what risotto is really. It's like a rice, it's like a, it's like a savory rice porridge. We're making a savory pasta porridge. It needs to be sturdy enough to kind of dome up. So we can't make it into a soup. But I guess I want, yeah, I want to go with the uh, sort of fish soup flavors. I think that sounds really tasty. So we're going to add a little bit of flavors to this. Um, we're not going to go for a whole mirepoix um, slash sofrito because I don't have uh, any celery. Uh, but I am going to take one of these little tiny carrots. And get it in there. This should give us little bits of color as well. Um, everything else in there is going to be kind of shades of white and tan. Um, now we won't keep the purple color so much, but the orange interiors should hold up pretty well. And give us a nice little color contrast with the generally kind of tan everything else is going to be in there um, uh, yeah carrot we'll put that in slightly ahead of the shallot. We're going to want some garlic as well. And we need our pumpkin spice because we're putting pumpkin spice in this too because, because, ow, that was very squeaky. Um, we're putting pumpkin spice in this too because I just can't help myself at this point. I'm giving in to memes. Um, garlic. Eh. The paper's off of there. But we definitely want some garlic in this. I can't see why we wouldn't want garlic in this. Uh, garlics are turning green on the end, which means they're trying to sprout, which means I need to use them up. Um, their papers are either really tight or kind of letting go on their own, which is strange. Um, parts of the papers are just like practically falling off on their own, and parts of the papers are firmly secured.
Okay. Peeled. Um, it did not take terribly long, which is good. We are going to pulverize it. We're going to need the microplane for a couple different things today, so I will have to rinse it off right away after I do this. Oh, we have an ad approaching in roughly a minute. So heads up for that. Um, so, how's things in chat land? Pretty quiet on my end. Uh, a little scraper. Little, little scraper. Okay, and then that will rest. It won't go in there until after we've got the uh, shallot and carrot in there and softened up anyways. So no concern about it being too soon. Uh, don't forget, prep your garlic well enough in advance of when you need it so that it has a chance to develop its flavor. We are also going to throw in this entire shallot. Uh, I should take a peek at my, my bacons. How are they coming? Ooh, they're getting real, real rendery over there. Um, ooh, that's a juicy shallot. Um, Very juicy shallot. Uh. Uh, so the carrots will have to go in very soon. They're diced quite small. All this stuff is diced quite small, so it should cook rather rapidly. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and take the carrots and throw them in now. I won't stir them around. We'll just toss them in and they can get started. Oh, this is a juicy shallot. It's burned my eyes with shallot juice. Oof. Uh, oh, there's our ad. And as promised, an ad. Let's come over to the stove. I think that was just the right time to do that because my bacon is smelling like it's on the edge of getting burnt. And having the carrots added will give us, will slow the cooking rate a bit. Again, carrots are pretty small, so I don't have to leave them in there too long to soften up. And so I won't. I will take, I will move on to adding our shallot pretty much right away. There's not a good visual indicator for, for carrots. You have to kind of just poke them and see what they're like. 
there is a good visual indicator for your onions and shallots because the uh, the opaqueness of the raw version turns translucent as they soften up. Eventually it starts turning brown. Ah, very... Ah, my eyes. Ah, my eyes. Ah, it's like getting gassed. It's like getting tear gassed. Damn. That was a very pungent shallot. Holy cripe sake. What the hell? Okay. Ah, damn. Gonna wash my hands because I touched it. And I don't want to touch my eyes if it's that extremely intense. Damn. I haven't had a shallot do that to me in a long time. I haven't had an onion do that to me in a long time. It's intense. Whew. Yow. Yow wee. Okay. Getting out another pot. I want. Another pot. No heat because nothing in it. Do I need enough? I don't think I need another pot. I think I can just measure this out cold and. I think I can just measure this out cold and be good. Um, I just don't have a container for three cups. But I have two containers for two cups. So, the rule for rice risotto is five to one liquid to rice. And that pretty much holds true for your pasta risotto. I'm going to bump it to six to one just so I can make a much easier even split. I kind of want to add some flour to that, but I might stick with a different starch. Do I have rice starch? Really no almond. Gluten potato regular flour. Potato. Um, so I want I want this to, to thicken extra. So we're gonna take actually a scooper of potato starch. Chuck that in our pan, stir it around, and let it get all free gelatinized with the bacon fat before I throw any of our liquids in there. This is also a good time to throw in our garlic. Uh, I've distracted myself. So that's getting started. We're going to, we don't need the starch anymore. We're going to have, if we want, we're going with half a cup of the, of the pasta, which means we need three cups of liquid for that. And we're gonna go with a half of it being our fish stock from Homemade Fish Stock Times, uh, which I will do here. So a cup and a half of that. And yes, this is quite a lot of liquid going into this. And half of it being milk. 
because I want this to sort of mimic a creamy soup type thing. I'm very close to the bottom edge of my camera for really no reason, because it also means I'm close to the edge of the countertop. Um, and our noodles, our little pasta grains, are going to go into the dry pan. Now that the garlic is fragrant, the same way we would do with uh, rice, just to sort of get them a slightly toasty before I start adding things. Um, and yes, that's quite a lot of liquid for this amount of stuff. And I'm just going to have to cook it until all that liquid is absorbed and we're going to end up with this porridge. And this should pick up all the grease in our pan as well and give us a nice dry result. Now, a big difference between what we're doing here and what you would do with a traditional risotto is I'm just going to put all the liquid in at once. Um, pasta doesn't cook the way rice does, and I have no reason to believe we won't get a perfectly good result from our liquids all being put in at once. Um, except that I want the, we're going to put the milk in second. We're not going to dose it in a little bit at a time like you would with a risotto, but I am going to put the milk in second because I want to give it a little bit more chance to steep our spices, which are going to go in the milk. So, deposit our fish stock. let this simmer away and absorb. Hang on to our milk. Prep our other spices. Come join me back over here. Pulling out our grinder and moving our board because the board tends to spin when I go for the grinder. Clove, allspice, uh, we have a tiny piece of a nutmeg here that's going to be hard to grate. We have one there that's already started as well. Oops. Drop our whole nutmegs. Cinnamon which got itself put to the back because it's taller and used less frequently than my other large spices, but I want it here. Eh. It's supposed to get easier to get these out as I use them, but it seems like it's getting harder. Gotcha. Cinnamon. So we're going to have our warming flavors, and we need ginger, which I should have probably diced up and put in with the saute, because we can use fresh ginger. So I'm actually going to put my dry spices to the side for a moment, quickly deal with a little piece of ginger here.
Eh. This ginger's a little bit soft. Uh, unlike onions, carrots, garlic, things like that, um, you can get the flavor out of ginger without having to expose it to uh, a dry saute. You can throw it in. They make things like ginger tea. Um, so throwing it in now is not going to be a big issue, but I do want to get it in so it can have a good chance to extract into this stiff. even before we get the other dry spices going. We're going to use up this little nugget of nutmeg until I can't grate it no more. I guess we will have to start a new cinnamon. Cinnamon is one of the harder things to to grate yourself. It likes to shatter while you're grating it instead of just grating. dust up all this stuff because every bit that's there is some tasty thing because it was clean when I started so <laughs> you can of course do this in a powered grinder and frankly probably should do put it in a powered grinder, you can just break a chunk of this guy off and you can uh, probably should just still grate one of the, you know, grate your nutmeg uh, with a, uh, a hand grater. Three minutes on our squash. Let's take a look at our stuff here. Uh, oh, we need to stir it a lot. The pasta is sticking to the bottom quite forcefully. And that's not good. Even in a nonstick pot, that means it is likely to burn onto the bottom. We're going to have more of this than I need, but that's fine. This should be pretty tasty to just eat in a bowl as well. I guess it's a good thing I used a nonstick pot. I would never have gotten that to release easily without a hard scrape in a regular pot. But we're getting pretty thick here as well. It's uh, doing that mud volcano thing. So, more liquid is needed. as well as our dry spices. Because now they can go in with the milk and steep and flavor it up nicely. This should give us a delicious, savory, warming, filling, Filling. A filling filling. The two senses of the word filling. Mm. 
Okay, we just need that to now. Get back to a simmer and thicken up. We'll put my cinnamon stick away. No longer required. Put all the rest of this stuff away as well. Uh, we need to get the fish ready. The fish is still frozen. So it's going to have to go in there, um, frozen, in order to thaw. And I want it to be in relatively small chunks. We do not need all three pieces here. So I did not want to thaw this whole thing out. Uh, we have today cod, which I believe uh, is in season. That's why I've been seeing it lately, recently. Uh, we're going to take the more irregular one. I've been seeing it on sale recently, so I think it's in season. Um, cod was, not too long ago, almost entirely fished out in the Atlantic. Uh, I remember when you just couldn't get cod. Cod was like the the nice fish option, and you you had to pay extra for it, and a lot of places serving fish things swapped it out for haddock and pollock. And the reason that happened is because the Atlantic cod shoals were horrifically overfished. And we're at the verge of, of total collapse. Um, and cod, they didn't, people didn't want to stop eating it, of course. So they kept fishing it. It just got more expensive. Um, but it meant that there was no recovering the cod shoals. The uh, international fishing community around the Atlantic got together and said, no, we can't let this happen. We have to save this. And they did. They put a moratorium on cod fishing, which made the price of cod spike massively because now we were only getting cod from uh, Pacific Shoals and Arctic Shoals, which are... We cut the, cut the supply down a, a lot. So cod became a real sort of luxury fish item, um, but it entirely worked. And the Atlantic cod shoals have bounced back massively to the point where they're no longer a uh, threat, threatened, and uh, you can feel good about eating cod uh, because they have responsibly maintained the populations. Um, and that's my fun fact. And now, in uh, the current times, we uh, can get it seasonally, very affordably. And it is a very, very nice fish. It's firm. It's lean. It's firm. It works well in fried applications. It works well in boiled applications. It's got a nice mild flavor. But still, but still has flavor. Some of those substitute white fishes don't taste like anything at all. Um, and it's not a big apex fish like a tuna or a swordfish, uh, which we shouldn't be eating either, um, <laughs> because they're too high on the food chain. So they're a full of mercury, and b they don't repopulate very efficiently. Um, but frozen tuna can go right in our simmering pot. It will thaw out as this comes up to a simmer, and then it will cook through, and we should have a chunky fish, pasta, pumpkin spice, risotto porridge. Pasta porridge? Let's call it pasta porridge. I know I put risotto in the title, but let's call it pasta porridge. Um... And I, as mentioned, I need this to be thick enough that I can 
make a mound out of it that'll hold that'll hold up. Um, oh, and I got distracted, and our squashes have been in there for an extra five minutes, but that's fine. That's not too much. But let's get them out of there. They can't be roasted completely to death. They need to have a bit of structural integrity to them. For stuffing. They sure are pretty. Um, those stripes are quite striking. Um, and then we are at the stage of we need to tend this so that it does not stick to the bottom or boil over. We need these guys to cool down a little bit so I can handle them enough to flip them over. And then we stuff them, put them back in the oven for a brief stint. I think we're going to top them with cheese and nutmeg. We definitely need to keep an eye on this. The milk in there means that this is a risk. If this ever goes to a full boil, it's probably going to foam over in just a few seconds. Um, so we do need to watch the pot here pretty hawkishly. Um, I want to make sure that these squashes aren't... Hmm? Ooh! Oh, it's beautiful! You're beautiful! Flipping them over will help them cool off because the cut side is trapping a bunch of steam. So they'll cool off a little bit faster this way. They'll dry out a little bit this way, which is also good because I'm going to have to fill them. But they developed a just gorgeous brown crust on the cut side. So that is exactly what I wanted to see. Uh, we're definitely going to have way more of this than I can put in those guys. Um, uh, yeah, well, it's been real quiet in chat today. I see you people hanging out. The milk is causing this to develop a bit of a skin. as well. It smells. It smells. Isn't it weird how the intonation of that uh, that phrase Im changes its meaning so much? Mmm, it smells. Mmm, it smells. It's the same word, and it literally means the same thing. In this case, it smells. Uh, it's it's such an interesting combination. It's um, it smells creamy and a little bit seafoody, but also there's this this warm, the warm spices really jump out of the smell. Um, we have an ad coming up, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run that right. Hey, book woman, you're here. I'm gonna run an ad right now because there's one coming up, and uh, I'm not doing anything of great importance at the moment. Boop. Um, welcome in. We are just about an hour into our thing. This is bubbling a little bit too hard. What is up? It's been a real quiet, it's been a real quiet hour so far. Um,
Yeah, this needs to simmer down a little bit, wobbling too hard. Um, ooh, del you had delicata last night. What did you do with your delicata? Uh, I believe this is the first one I've had, so I'm experimenting with... I'm learning about squashes, and we're experimenting with them. Um, I especially am intrigued by the ones that you can just eat the skin, and because um, I really hate peeling. I like the flavor of butternut, but I hate peeling a butternut. This is uh, definitely a lighter color, and it l feels less dense than a butternut. Um, sliced and roasted. Nice. Uh, well, ours here have been roasted for a half an hour. Uh, they developed a really beautiful color on the cut side. Uh, and then I flipped them to help them cool off a little bit. And they are waiting for our concoction here to thicken up. And it is... It is definitely becoming very, very thick, but it needs to be thick enough that I can, that it won't run away. Zizan, you're first. You beat Bookwoman. And a moisten, which I was just about to do. Uh, thank you for the moisten. Uh, so yeah, uh, the idea for this stuff is I want it to be thick enough that if I, when I scoop it into the squash halves, it, I can mound it up. It doesn't just run around like a soup. So we really have to thicken this. Um, which means I have to be very careful with it too, because as it gets thicker, it's going to be more and more prone to doing the the mud volcano thing and also to developing a skin under the top, sticking on the bottom, potentially burning. We really got to keep an eye on it. Um, we have quite a lot more than I need. Uh, I told a whole story about the cod shoals in the North Atlantic because there's cod in this, because this is essentially a pumpkin spiced fish soup that I'm trying to thicken to the point where it, it holds its shape. Which we're going to have to do gently so that we don't uh, ruin it. Oh. But yeah, I had the delicata. I was trying to think of... I had a, I had a long brainstorming session by myself. Um, I was trying to think of what I could do today. So I just went to the grocery store and wandered around, which is something I do when I'm looking for ideas. I just wander around and see what's available. Um, oh, pumpkin fish cheese soup. This is not dissimilar to that, except that I'm not making it as an actual soup. Um, I should make that. I should make that. Like the real thing? I should, I should, I should make that. Um, uh, so I was wandering around. I uh, remembered I had this, and then I was trying to think of what to stuff it with. Um, and that's when I stumbled upon cod on sale. Not on sale. Well, yeah, on sale. Not on just not in the, the bargain bin, but like just a normal sale. I'm pretty sure cod is in season right now, uh, because I've seen it uh, going on sale multiple times recently. Um, and I would much rather have things like that where they're in. You can get them when they're in season, rather than them being horrifically, desperately overfished so that they can be provided in all seasons. Um, uh, 
Um, but yeah, I think I could I could concoct. It was made with uh, it was a, it was a pumpkin, um, which this is the season to do it if you want to do it with actual pumpkin. You can actually get eating pumpkins right now. Um, it was it was a cheese it was a cheese, but it was like a big block of cheese, and I think it was a smelly fish. I don't remember. You would know better than me. You're you're much more of a Zelda expert than I am. Uh, I might need you on hand as we write up a recipe for it. Um, I'm going to have lots of extra of this. Because um, there is going to be cheese in, in here as well, except it's going to be parm on the top. Not a big block of something stinky. And, ooh, actually... How do you feel about grated sheep's cheese? Um, hi, Rayuya. Uh, what I've got here is... Hmm, boop. Hidden Springs Creamery Wischego, which is a locally made Menchego and I haven't opened it. I got it at the farmer's market. There's a cheese people at the farmer's market and I have not yet opened it. And I love Menchego. Um, so we're going to open that literally right now. I think we're going to, uh, I think we're going to use this as our cheese in our risotto over there, or our pasta porridge, because it's not risotto, because it's not rice. Mmm. Yes, that was a good idea. I'm going to use that. Um, oh gosh, I don't know. I didn't go last weekend. Um, so I didn't get a chance to see, I'll have to check on their website. They're definitely close if they haven't sh closed up shop yet. Um, I didn't, I didn't get this last week. I got it a couple weeks ago. Um, and I've just been sort of holding it for a special occasion, which apparently is today. You can't see me doing anything. I was uh, over over here. I was just stirring this. Um, I wasn't doing anything special. I was just stirring this because it's a. Uh, it's at the stage where it is trying to stick to the bottom. It is trying to volcano at the top, and it is and it is also trying to develop a skin. Um, so we pretty much have to tend it constantly. It does not quite meet my specifications, but it's getting close. I should probably taste it while it's still liquidy enough to add things to as well, just to see if the seasoning needs to be adjusted at all. I have not tasted it since I started it, so. I just forget, my homemade fish, my homemade fish stock is unsalted, so it always needs to have salt added to it. This needed salt. A few grinds of pepper. Honestly, I'm surprised the uh, pumpkin spice blend is not more 
in your face. We could potentially add more of all of those, although I don't want to overpower it. So they're not hidden. They're not for sure not hidden. Um, I was thinking I was going to grate a little bit of extra nutmeg on the top as a garnish and flavoring element. So that'll probably be enough to sort of boost it up. Um, if you've missed what's gone into here, this is a combination of. See, we started with we started with bacon, so it's bacon, carrot, shallot, garlic. Then I added some potato starch. Then we put in our little micro pastas, um, which are called axini di pepe, um, to which we added. A cup and a half of my homemade shellfish stock, a cup and a half of milk, our pumpkin spice blend, which is allspice, nutmeg, cloves, cinnamon, and ginger. And then I've just added salt and pepper because it needed a little bit of a, of a, a booster. And we are working on thickening it. Adding some cheese to it would also help thicken it up. Um, uh, and then we're going to put it in those squashes. And I'm going to taste this cheese. Ooh! Ooh! God, I love Manchego. Ooh. It's hard. A little bit of little bit of tang. A little bit of aged cheese tang. A little bit of nutty. Texture is very similar to a very hard Parmesan, but it's not very salty and it's not very funky. Mmm, Manchego is so good. I wish sheep's cheese in general was more common. It's very good. Um, I was going to top it with our cheese and some freshly grated nutmeg. That was my plan for the topping. Um, but this is going back in the oven after we fill them because I want to toast the tops a bit. Um, so we're going to throw it in the oven after this and hit it with the broiler. I'm actually going to move my oven grate down one so that we're not right up against the broiler. And that's why I want this to sort of mound up. We are definitely reaching our thickness. It's going to ooze a bit if I throw it in there now, but we, I think we're just about, just about ready, just about to the point where it's going to have a hard time thickening in the pot anymore. Um, bread, I don't want to add breadcrumbs to this. This is, this is already, a lot of starch in this. I don't really want to add another starch to it. Um, oh, we could, ugh, damn it. Once again, we could have used evaporated milk. It would have required less thinning uh, or less um, thickening uh, if I had reached for evaporated milk. I've got a bunch of evaporated milk up there. I just keep forgetting to use it. Um, okay. So this recipe, you say write this recipe down. I didn't make this one up on the spot today. I, well, I kind of did. Um, while I was thinking about what I was going to make, as I sort of settled on, I want to stuff a delicata squash, and then I want, and then I saw the, the cod. Pretty much as soon as I saw the cod, 
the concept sort of fully formed out of my head of, oh, I'll do this. So I haven't just been throwing, I've had this plan in mind since we started today. Um, and everything has sort of fallen in perfect order. Um, I've got the heat off. I need a scooper, but a small scooper. We're going to be, we're going to be gentle with the, the, uh, the scoopage. See, that burner is still hot. The pan is not. We're going to get a little bit closer. We're going to fill her up. Mmm. Mmm. Dang. That's tasty. It's sticky. I think we're going to get a good, a good shaped mound out of it. Because it's getting, even just, just taking the heat off a little bit has made it very sticky like stick to itself selfie Oh, so how's everyone's day going? We, everyone arrived just in time for the exciting conclusion where I uh, assemble this and then we uh, taste it and see if my uh, vision that f burst fully formed into my head while I was shopping um, actually comes true. Uh... Oh, hot. Mm. Really tasty. It's really tasty. Okay. Oven open. Squashes in Royal. How much of this stuff do I have left? I'm going to scrape the rest of this stuff out while we are broiling. I'm pretty proud of this one, honestly, as a concept. Um, it's not like... Oh, we can get that in a smaller container. Um, it's not like I've, I've invented something wholly new, but gosh, it just made a lot of sense when I, when I came up with it and it, everything thus far has worked as I imagined it. So I must be on the right track. We're back in the realm of savory pumpkin spice, which I'd love. Um, I know broiling goes quick. I know broiling goes quick. Just long enough to get that thing in there. We're gonna 
Take a peek. I had let the oven cool down a bit too, so the broiler should run pretty forcefully for the first part here uh, as it tries to get back up to tamp. Um, while that's doing that, I'm going to rinse off our grater to get the garlic off of it so that we don't get garlic on my block of cheese. I'm so glad cod is a, is once again available, abundant, and we can eat it without big, outstanding environmental concerns. Um, Cause dang, it's a tasty fish, um, and it's so much easier to work with than the uh, the substitutes. Never been a big fan of haddock. Oop, turn that light off so I'm not completely blown out. Let us take a gander. I'm hoping to get a little bit of browning without blackening on the tops. We're sizzling. There's a little bit of, there's a few little leopard speckles appearing on the tops of, of the uh, the risotto. I don't want that to be in there for more than five minutes. Um, and then when it comes out and it's blazing hot, then we put the cheese directly on it. The cheese should get melty on the top. And then we move over to serving. And as predicted, I think we're going to end up with a slightly short show. I knew it was going to be either slightly short or slightly long and not slightly in the middle. Um, we should select a plate. Most of you guys know what plates I've got. What do you think would go well with this thing? It's going to be a kind of a beige food, so... Ooh, okay. I'm starting to smell it, so I'm gonna go ahead and kill the broiler and get it out of there. Um, yeah, we've browned the top. Little bits of parchment. The parchment didn't like the broiler, um, obviously. White is the, like, universal classic. I also have a black plate. Um, Square plate with the wavy lines is definitely an option. Um, I will get it out and hold it up next to them, though. We can, uh, we can do some judging. Okay, we had white plate. From Saizan.
Yeah. And we had square plate with the lines from uh, Buck Woman. And now we have size N on the side of square plate with the line, so I guess we're going to go with that one. Uh, let's move things around. I don't need the board. I do like how the uh, the lines sort of give you a visu some visual interest. Um... Now, I would only eat one of these serving them, so... Ooh, okay. They're much heavier than they were. <laughs> now that they're full, they're a lot heavier. Um, so I think I need... to get under it as well as grab the sides. Um, so that we don't fall apart or roll around. Um, I have nothing else going on the plate besides these guys. This is a full meal, so we're gonna slightly angle them. and put them both on the plate. Okay. And there we are. This, this camera has been real dim today. I'm not sure what's causing it. Um, and then I was gonna give them each just a Dusting of fresh nutmeg, which you can't even hardly see, but it's there. You don't want to go too nuts with nutmeg because it's got a pretty strong flavor. Um, and then I have no sauces, no nothing else to go with this. This is this is the whole this is the whole thing. Mm. There's little bits fell. Oh my god. Mm. Mm. I'll tell you about it in a sec. Put this plate away. We're not going to use that plate. Add in three minutes a sprig of parsley. Something decorative on the plate would be nice. It doesn't have any green. That's the thing. And uh, Rayuya suggested some green onion. I don't think I want to add. But what if... I compromise and go with chives. We have an ad approaching. I'm going to run that one again early. I'm going to run it right now. I'm going to go run and get some chives. While I'm out of the room, you guys can uh, enjoy the ad. Decorative clover from the yard. Um, I have parsley, so we might do both. But uh, be right back. I'm going to cut some chives. Um, if you can still hear me. You should still be able to hear me because we've test I tested this and it picks up my voice all the way to the other end of the house. Um, chives have moved indoors on account of the weather turning. So now they are in the front window instead of in the back garden. So we'll just cut a couple chives. This chive plant has gone nuts. Uh, coming back, coming back. Turn this light on. Turn that light on and wake up my tablet so that it can do all of its notifications before I need it. Um, I return 40 seconds.
Chives go in risottos a lot as well, so I feel like chive is the correct, like, choice. Should have sprinkled them on. Uh, and the ad is over. Okay, great. Okay. I don't want them all over the plate. I want them all over the food. So one chive I feel like this is going to be the front That's going to be the front. We're going to rotate this whole guy around gently, gently. Slide him up a little bit, and then we can have the parsleys sort of peeking out from behind the rear one, along with the extra chive. a little bit too long. There. Some green to accent the plate. That's how you make things fancy. Have little green bits on your plate. Um, any green bits will do. They make things fancy. Let's go take our photographs and then we will come back and we will taste this and we will see if all of my visions of what this was going to be have come true. It was really amazing how sort of fully formed this idea was when I came up with it. Usually I, I have a half formed idea and I kind of wing it. Okay. I am excited to dig in because I have tasted the filling a couple of times just for a sort of standard taste as you go, so I already know it's tasty. But we're going to taste it as a whole thing. Um, the cheese did not melt very much at all. I don't think this cheese is a very good melting cheese, um, which makes sense because it is a very hard cheese. It's much harder than... Uh, like a parm. Stuff on top is just mush soft. But I do need a knife to get through the skin of the... Oh, and it's like slightly drippy on the inside still. Broiling it was a good idea. It gave us a good sort of firm layer on the top. Okay, let's give this a taste-a-roo. Well, that thing's dangerous. You can taste the calories. It's really good. Mmm. Um, it's, it's so delicate. It's such a delicate flavor when it's put all together. The, um, 
the squash is much less in your face pumpkin-y than like a butternut. It's got this really light flavor to it, which is a great with the uh, rich, the rich, but still gentle, gentle richness of the, um, the filling. Um, the little bits of fish in there. And this is why, mm, mm. this would not have worked as well with a different fish. Cod is such a mild flavor that it's not fighting with any of the rest of the stuff, but it's firm enough that you can still tell when you get a piece of fish. If you use something like tilapia or pollock, they would have just disintegrated in this. If you use something like salmon, you'd get these little punches of salmon flavor coming through that would, but the cod kind of, the flavor blends in, but then you get these little textural pieces. Um, yes, you can eat the skin. I have been specifically doing research on squashes to learn the ones that you can eat the skin on because I hate peeling squashes. And I'd much rather eat the skin. And you can indeed eat the skin on a delicata, just like you can eat the skin on a sugar pie pumpkin. Um, you can also eat the skin on a couple other ones. You can eat the skin on the celebration, or is it, or what is it, carnival? The, 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 the one that's all like speckly, looks like fireworks. Um, I believe you can eat the skin on the Japanese one that's like bright orange on the outside. Um, and I believe you can eat the skin on the white acorn squash, but not the dark green acorn squash. Mm. But yes, it's a nice, mild, light flavor. I'm glad I went with a light flavored filling and didn't just overwhelm it. Yeah, red curry. Can you, can you eat the skin on red curry? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I've only recently done been starting research on squashes. Um, but look how it holds together too. You get a slice and the stuff doesn't all just immediately fall out. It's sticky enough that it, that it stays with the squash. So you can get these nice little slices of it. Walleye. Walleyes are smaller. You wouldn't get as nice of chunks, but probably yes, it would work. Um, the cod, for, for, for reference, the cod I used was this. So they're these like pretty decent like sticks. So you can cut them into cubes. So you can get little chunks. Walleyes are a bit smaller, so the pieces you get off of them aren't as thick. So you don't get as big of pieces. I believe walleyes are actually related to cods. Um, so that makes sense. There are definitely other fishes you could use, but cod is a a nice go-to. I mean, I bet you there's tons of other fishes you could use for this. I bet this would work with mahi-mahi. I bet this would work with... Mm, it might not work with swordfish. Swordfish might be too dense, too firm. You want some of those sort of medium-sized white fish. This is real good. And the, um, it has a bunch of, it, I said, it, the first thing I said was, this is dangerous. You can taste that it's very rich, but it doesn't overwhelm you with it. So you can just keep eating this and eating this. Um, you could, you could, I could polish this thing off without realizing it. It, it would go quick. Mmm. Interestingly, I'm not tasting the bacon at all. I think it's been in there long enough that it's completely leached its flavor into the... There wasn't a ton of it in there to begin with, but it's completely leached its flavor into the rest of this. I'm not getting, like, pieces of bacon, even though I think I can see some. Like there. 
they don't taste like bacon. Mm, if I isolate them completely, I can taste them. But they kind of blend in with the rest, which is interesting, because usually bacon is a very assertive flavor. But I like that it's, I like that this has, it's all very gentle, delicate flavors. Nothing is jumping out at you. You could serve this to people and they would be very happy. <laughs> you could serve this to pretty much anyone, they'd be very happy. Um, even all those spices I put in, because of the volume of our thing, they're all pretty understated. We're, we're, we're nice, sort of gentle. Um, yeah, so that was the project for the day, guys. Uh, I... Conceived of this, fully formed in my head, and it came out pretty much exactly how I imagined it, which is amazing. I don't know that I can't remember the time that any any last time that's happened. Um, well, I don't know that I want it to stand out more. Pancetta might. Um, Pancetta is different in that it's cured, but it's not smoky. Um, I think, I think it would serve a similar function. You want a pretty fatty piece. I had a quite a fatty piece of bacon because I wanted to use the fat from the bacon to start my pan for the carrots and shallots, and then also to serve as the roux. There's a, there's a cheater's roux in this because I threw some potato starch in before I added the liquid to soak up the remaining bacon fat to really help it thicken because I wanted I wanted to make sure it would thicken enough that I could I could mound it up like this um, which it's thick enough that I can uh, tip it on its side it doesn't fall out it's it's almost like you could eat like a sandwich well, there's the nice cross section we got a really nice cross section I'm probably gonna take another photo with the cross section um, yes if you had just bacon fat left over I would just use that and not worry about the uh, uh, using, you know, fresh bacon. Um, but that's why I spent so much time simmering it, because I wanted it to be thickened up enough that I could get a good piece. So I'm going to take another picture of this with the cross-section visible um, after we're done talking about it, which should be just about now. Mm. I didn't eat this in, and I didn't mention um, this toasty outer rim you can taste that. It's like caramelized squash. It's got this slight crisp to it, and it's got a really sort of toasty flavor. Um, so, big fan. Would do again. Delicata, give it a try. Use a slice on a sandwich. That might be too much starch. Remember, the filling is very starchy. It'd be starch on starch, and it's... If you chilled it, it probably would be firm enough that you could slice it, and the slices would hold together. They're a little bit loose once you get them away, when it's warm like this. Uh, I don't know what this would taste like chilled. Um, I think my only notes for this is I would... I would amp up the, uh, the warm spices just a little bit, because I think they're a little bit lost. They're not gone, but they're not. I guess I would. I probably. I probably would amp up the nutmeg a little bit. Um. And the allspice, and I probably would put the ginger in with the garlic to get it sort of toasting before I uh, put the liquids in. I just kind of boiled the ginger, so. I don't have any crusty bread right now. Otherwise, we could give that a try. Um, and I don't really feel like starting crusty bread now in this very moment. Um, but yeah, I think everything is good. The cheese on top is very mild. It's just barely present in the flavor. And I... Mm, that's a good cheese. I think that you could get away with, in fact, I, I almost say the cheese 
probably should be a Romano, Pecorino Romano, instead of Manchego or even Parm. I think that's the flavor that it that this wants more. Um, so I have a few notes about it, but yeah, I, ha I have a f I have a few notes about it. I might even you know I might even attempt to make the same thing again because I have more cod in there, more cod lugs because there were th three in that package. And I only used one. Um, squash is in season, so I can get a squash pretty cheap. So I might just do this again on my own time to, to sort of do recipe notes. Um, although I'm low on fish stock because I just used most of my remaining fish stock. So that would be a change. I used homemade. I used my homemade fish stock for this. Um, so that would be something that's hard to account for. Um, Okay, so it's not perfect. It is pretty much what I had in mind uh, when I conceived of it, and I uh, just have a few minor notes. It's a very, it's a very pleasant. It's a very pleasant food to eat. It's not blowing my mind with how delicious it is. It's just gentle, warm, filling, tasty. Mm. Comfort food. Comfort food. This is a comfort food. Um, I've been rambling. Um, I'm going to wrap us up because we've been through the tasting. Um, I want to get photos of this, and I, I, although I say I want to get it while it's still warm, it is retaining heat like crazy. Um, it's so dense that I think this will be warm for a half an hour. Um, but I'm going to wrap us up so I can go eat this, so I can go take take some snaps and eat it. Um, you could definitely adapt this multiple ways. If you wanted it spicy, wouldn't be hard. If you wanted it more fishy, swap out for a, uh, a stronger flavored fish. You want, you know, this is a, this is very adaptable and it works really well. Um, let's go see someone. Wow, there's a bunch of people. I thought there'd be less people on right now because TwitchCon is in full. Everyone's gone to Vegas for TwitchCon and they're not streaming from uh, there. So I thought there'd be less people on, but no, I guess a lot of people didn't go to TwitchCon. Um, we are going to go see Lafay. Um, Friend of the channel, probably my most frequent raid target, Lefay. There's a lot of people on right now. Um, yes, uh, thank you so much for uh, hanging out. We had a little bit of a quiet start, but uh, you all showed up for the exciting part, so I, I suppose I should expect that. <laughs> I don't want to just watch them chop vegetables for half an hour. Um, the game that I had wanted to try playing here on stream last week, but wasn't being released until this week, has officially released today, and good thing I waited, it's on sale. Um, so, I guess I will attempt to get my rig set up for that, and... Um, do some kind of a game. Um, yeah, I don't have much else to say. Um, I will see you next time. Let's all go say hi to LaFay. Let's uh, make her jealous about delicious foods. Um, and I will see you next time. Bye.